Hello, this is Chris with Off to Class, and I want to talk about websites today. Websites are super important. A lot of teachers want websites. A lot of teachers feel like they need websites. And I'm going to give specific feedback to one teacher's website that they asked for feedback on. Um, so we're just going to jump right into it. So if you are interested in making a website, or if you have a website, or if you've tried to make a website, this is going to be helpful information for you. So the first thing that you have to do before we, we get into the details is ask yourself why you want or need a website. Because if you can't answer that question, if your answer to the question of why do you want or need a website is, well, I see other English teachers with websites and I think it would make me just look more credible if I had one. If that's your answer, it's probably not the best answer. That you prob A website is probably not for you right now. Um, and let's talk more about that. Zooming out, what are the alternatives to websites? If you feel like you need a website, but you don't know what the options are, I want to just zoom out and let's talk about the three routes that I always recommend, okay? You basically have three choices if you want to teach online. Choice number one, work for a company, okay? When you work for a company, the great thing is you don't have to worry about logistics, you don't have to worry about scheduling, you don't have to worry about curriculum, but the downside is you're just a number, you're not a name, the pay is low, and, and with things happen around the world, like the companies could go out of business and then you have no recourse. Um, the second one is working for a marketplace, the italki, the verbling, the preplies of the world. Um, going that is, that's where I'll, I recommend to a lot of teachers because you don't have to worry about uh, a lot of the troubles of going independent. Going independent is where you are gonna want a website. You will want a website if you go that, that third route. And the benefit of going independent is you have full freedom. You can sell online courses. You can do all kinds of different packages. You could make a membership instead of people just buying one-to-one -one lessons. You can get bigger and grow. The downside is it's just like starting any other business where you've got to learn a bunch of skills. You've got to learn about copywriting and funnels and email marketing and social media. It's a lot of work, especially at the beginning. Uh, that work in the beginning won't yield results right away unless you're spending money on advertising. And most teachers who try that are not able to succeed. Okay, so that's why we want to first look at the three choices. And if knowing the, that information, you decide, I want door number three. I want the unlimited income potential. I want the full freedom. I don't want to be bound by someone else's terms and conditions. That is when you're going to need a website. So if you do want a website, the next step is to think about the pitfalls because there are pitfalls in making a website. Let's just talk about a, a couple of them or maybe even the first one. This is the one that most people think about when they think about a website. It's hard to make it look good. Um, most teachers don't know anything about web design. And so, sure, there's lots of tools that make it intuitive and easy, the Wix, the Squarespace, the Weebly. Um, GoDaddy, all of these companies make it easy to make a website so that they make it so that you don't have to code, which is amazing. However, what they don't do is give you the ability to make it look good. Uh, they might allow you to build a website without difficulty, but they don't allow you to build a really good looking website unless you get a really specific template, but then it's inhibiting your freedom. But even if your website does look good, a website is useless unless you have strong and good messaging to your target audience. It doesn't matter how beautiful your website is. If you don't have a compelling message on your website, it's not gonna yield any results. If you don't update the content regularly by blogging or podcasting or putting videos to YouTube and on your website, it's not gonna get anywhere. A website that exists in the middle of the internet, there's over a billion blogs, right? It's crazy how many, how many websites there are. No one is gonna just find it automatically. Unless you are committing to either spending money to advertise your website or spending the time to create content to update your website regularly, nothing will happen. If you make a website that looks nice and put some buy buttons on it and just put it on the internet, and you know, post about it on social media once a day, it's not gonna work, okay? 
Um, the other thing your website needs, in addition to looking good, having good messaging, and having regular content updates, is you need a basic funnel. And why do you need a basic funnel? Because of all the people that come to your website, 90% of them are not going to be looking to buy. Okay. And what do I mean by that? I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. And I'm going to show you why that is. So it's really important for anyone making a website to understand what we call the buyer's journey. And I'm going to talk about it in really, really simple terms. So I'm at HubSpot.com, the HubSpot blog. The HubSpot blog is a great resource to learn marketing for beginners. So the buyer's journey can be broken down here, as you can see on the screen, into three stages, awareness stage, consideration stage, and decision stage. So under awareness stage, we have someone who has pain and problem aware. And what that means for someone who is a potential English student is they are, are just frustrated that they can't express themselves, but they haven't yet started thinking about what they're going to do about it. They're only upset and frustrated by the problem. We have to think about problems for a while before we move to a place, which is the next step, which is the consideration stage. That's when we say, you know what, you have to reach this point where you go, you know what, um, I am sick and tired of not being understood in my meetings. So I need to do something about it. I, need, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. I don't know if I'm going to take a course, one-to-one -one lessons. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go to, you know, fly to San Francisco and do a week-long intensive course, but I need to do something. That's where we get into the consideration stage, where someone is aware that they're going to need to do something about it, but they still don't know what. Now, when we take these two stages, awareness and consideration, these two stages represent 95% of all website visitors. And anyone in these two stages is not yet ready to buy. So the problem with your web, with any website, every website that sells something, doesn't matter the industry, 95% of the people are not gonna buy when they first come to the website. Only when we are finally in this last stage, the decision stage, and you're provider aware, that means you know that there are people who sell solutions to your problem and you're ready to pick one. Only this 5% are people that are gonna buy from you. As an aside, this is part of the reason why I recommend the marketplaces, the italki, the Verbling, the Preply, the Cambly, not, no, not the Cambly, but others like it. I recommend those because those websites only are for people who are in the decision stage. All the people who are like do, still thinking about it, none of those people are going to go to italki. You go to italki when you say, darn it, my English is a real problem and I need to pay for lessons, and I'm ready to go pick a teacher. For ev Even though we think of italki or Preply or these places like this marketplace full of students, everyone is on their own journey. And that's the very, very end of the journey. The very end of the journey is when they say, I'm ready to do something about this. So here's the big issue when we bring it back to your own website. When you come to your own website, what do you do with all of these people who are at the awareness stage and the consideration stage. If, if you are only saying book a trial lesson on my website, you're ignoring them. If you're only saying meet with me for a free lesson, those 95% of people are going to leave your website and they're not going to come back. So that's why, coming back to my point before, you need a basic funnel. A basic funnel is a way to stay in touch with these people so that they remember you when it's time to make a decision. So that's why you see websites do things like have a free have a free ebook. This is a PDF that I'm going to give you in exchange for your email address. Those things are there because they're catering to the 95% of people that are just not ready to buy because it's that many. And that's why that's a step that even though it adds complication, even though it adds a level of automation that you're going to have to learn about, it's a skill that's absolutely worth learning how to do um, in order to capture the people. So now that we kind of talked about those things, I'm ready to share specific feedback on a teacher that uh, asks for website feedback. So all of the feedback that I'm giving helps fit into that context. So I'm going to keep this part fairly brief, okay? So let's look. This is CanadianBilingualSchool.com. So this is what, as a potential student, I see right away. Um, here's the issue that I have with this. 
most browsers translate automatically, or you can put this in a menu. The, when you go to a website, visitors are going to describe, going to decide in seconds whether they're going to stay on this website or go. And what you're doing is you want to take advantage of those precious first few seconds. But what you're doing is you're making them um, look at this chat pop up, which you probably don't want them to do first thing. And then you're making them choose a language when that can be done elsewhere. So let's click English and let's take a look at what happens at the website. Here's my most important feedback. My most important feedback is I recommend a personal brand, not a school brand. I'm assuming you don't have dozens of teachers and hundreds of students. Um, if it's mostly you, lean into the personal brand. Why? Because it's much easier for a potential student to bond with a real person, to learn. We only buy from people who we know, like, and trust. It's so much easier to get to know, like, and trust an individual than a brand. It, it works for Nike because Nike has instant brand recognition all over the world. But we're just, we're just online teachers. Nobody knows us from anybody. So this Canadian um, bilingual school, people don't know what that is. And it, we, we, can I trust this, this school? This web, I don't know who's behind this website. Is this even a real person? Are they going to take my money and never contact me again? So for this reason, I always recommend a personal brand. Um, and so I'm just going to show you two quick examples. These are English teachers who are having success with their websites and they're both personal brand. So this, this is speakenglishwithvanessa.com. The first thing I see is I see Vanessa. I see her. It tells me, she's looking right into the camera. This is a real person. And when I scroll down, I see more of her. And I can take these, I can register for these courses. I, I don't know if they're free or paid, but then look what we have down here. I've got a free ebook. And this free ebook is so that Vanessa can communicate with the 95% of people. Here's another one. English with Christina, Christina Rubify. This is a business English coach. She, she's reaching out like a very corporate sort of thing, but it's her on the website. So it's a benefit-driven headline, images of her. And as we scroll down, we have more her, more her, more her. It's building trust. And we have ways that we can um, get in, we can stay in touch with her. So for you, I recommend considering a personal brand and considering a way that people can get in touch with you for free. Um, the website looks good. Like this is a nicely done website. It, like as far as the first thing where I said websites are hard to make look good, this website looks good. But I think the problem is the problem is not how good it looks. The problem is that it may be hard to connect with people uh, to make them trust you quickly. And for all the people who need to learn more, there's no way for them to do that. Um, I do like how you have the booking system integrated. That's way better than like a contact us. Um, I don't know what travel Spanish is. This is a big piece of the website that doesn't seem to be connected to learning um, English or French, but if it is a part, it's not obvious to me. So I like how you have the social media. This looks very professional, but my, my biggest, um, you can even call it Canadian bilingual school, right? I, you don't have to be, you don't have to switch your domain name or switch your logo, but instead of an image of a stock image of, of buildings, I would put your face front and center, like what Vanessa and Christina have done. Um, so look, this is very cursory feedback, but I try to put this feedback in the context of websites in general, because it's, it, it doesn't do a lot of good to give very specific critiques unless we understand the big picture of the website. I do uh, appreciate 